you know, it's just YouTube. So. <laughs> <laughs> is this how it's going to start? <laughs> okay, we're starting. Okay, ready? Ready? Yeah. Starting off is the hardest part for me. For you? Yeah, that and signing off. Signing mm. in and signing off. What What is hard about signing off for you? Because you get, you reach a point where you're like, oh, have I said everything I need to say? And now I need to keep everyone interested. Uh for the last 10 seconds while I say goodbye, you know? Mm. Because most people, they they sense that you're either wrapping up and they'll just (laughs) click off the video, you know? And do you feel like you have to make some profound closing statement to leave them with? No. I just have to trick them into watching the whole thing. (laughs) Yeah. I see. I'll sometimes feel like I have to have a good summary at the end, like what you're saying at first, did I say everything I, I needed to say or sort of like an essay point. format, a conclusion. Yes. My thesis back to the thesis and then right. saying bye, also saying hi and bye the same way to me. I don't have like a cool slogan or yeah. that's not a slogan necessarily. Catch Catchphrase. Phrase. Yeah. Yeah. How did you come up with frisky ponies and stay cool and attractive? And if you don't want to share, uh, all right, if you well, want it to remain a mystery, that's okay. no. Well, frisky. Po- well, I'll start off with frisky ponies because that's the more disappointing story. Uh, and actually, some of my viewers knew the first time I used it. There were a few viewers who knew what I stole it from right away because I didn't come up with that. That's actually from Stolen. I stole it. Like I stole it. Like. I was trying to come up with a rhyme with stole it, mm-hmm. but I couldn't and it wasn't stole there. Stole it like a bowl. Stole it like bowl it. Uh, but <laughs> <laughs> don't know what the bowl stole someone's <clears throat> red underwear. Well, there you go. I think you had it going right there. But uh, Craig Ferguson was the host of the Late Late Show on CBS from like 2006 to... 2014 or 15 when James Corden is that who it is now uh Mm -hmm. and Craig Ferguson for a couple years it wasn't it was like 10 years ago like 2007 when he'd come back from commercial breaks he would say hello my frisky ponies and he would also do cheeky monkeys it was to the two of those so, hello, hello, my cheeky monkeys. And occasionally, he would come up with another one, but those were the two. Mm. And it's just stuck with me. And he stopped saying it after a while. That was the thing. I loved his show because he would get these inside jokes and he would stick with them for, like, months in the show. And then, all of a sudden, they'd be gone. It's like a running joke. Yeah, yeah. So, he had a lot of those. So, Frisky Ponies was one of them. And I was just trying to come up with something to say at the beginning and I was like well Craig Ferguson said it probably how many people are going to remember a show that was on 10 years ago at you know 12 30 in the morning welcome back my frisky ponies <laughs> but it was, there was a few years of magic with that show though mm. I stayed up every night to watch it um at least the monologue part then the guests came on and it was boring so so frisky ponies is just a total ripoff but well, it's almost like an homage. Yeah, that's that's a good way to put it. But you know, and then the stay cool and attractive. That of all things, you want them to. What yeah, is cool. So, uh, did, you, did you ever watch Homestar Runner, the cartoon on the internet? <laughs> yes. Yeah. So I haven't thought about that for years. Yeah, yeah. So they came out with a video game like in two thousand eight called Strong Bad's Cool Game for Attractive People. So those two adjectives just stuck out in my mind. It's like those are, they're shallow things, but they're also like valuable things. To be able to be like cool, disaffected by the world around you and attractive, not necessarily just like pretty, but you want people to gravitate towards you. So, you know, Mm. for for good reasons, so you can help them out. They do come together. So if you're chill. Yeah. And let things go and have that sort of free spirit. But attractive is subjective, so you're not necessarily... Right. Like, even if you are attracted to someone's 
personality of not giving any craps. Like someone else might be like, wow, they're lazy. Right. <laughs> right. Depending on the humans. Yeah. But anyways. So I wouldn't put too much stock in it, but it. No, I <laughs> and I didn't. I just thought it'd be interesting for yeah. your fans to hear more about. You have many a fans. How do you feel? I guess it is a bit odd when I think about it to have people who are fans because I don't think of I don't think of myself in in the way of being someone who it's possible to have fans. You know what I mean? It's like I'm just a guy on YouTube. So, um and we're in like yeah. we're in a very small part of YouTube also, you know? Yes. So That is a strange word to fans. Like even when I said it when I'm like, you have fans, it's like, it almost dehumanizes a person, or it like sounds yeah. very like a fan. The other side, when really you kind of created a community where you're just like all kind of like talking. Right. You know, it's more of like a conversation. It's not like necessarily, you know, like Prince and then like, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, but you know, there's also like a more casual use of the word fan where it's like, you know... I'm a fan of your videos. I look forward to when they come out. So, but is it like, I feel I would, is it the same as if I met Paul McCartney? No, but it's like right. still a fan. It's a spectrum of fandom. Yeah, yeah. So. You don't have to, like, I'm really picking apart all these different, uh, these different words that we're using. Yeah. Attractive fan right let's talk about all this well i guess the thing no but oh go ahead the humans yeah the, no you go well the thing with the thing with fandom or someone who is who has fans is it's like part of it is the what's the word the mythology you know <laughs> about it like how how mystical how big is the person how separate is their mm. image from their actual personality you know and just because I'm I'm me, there I don't I can sort of see a little bit of the separation, but I don't really think there is much. So that's why yeah, you could be a fan because you like my work, but it's not the same as being a fan of someone where it's like you really don't know who they are, you know. Mm. That's interesting. So you said you're fairly close. To putting out who you feel you actually are. Yeah, but... What do you think keeps you from putting out exactly who you are? Well, I think there's... Maybe you can relate to this. I'm not sure what your experience on YouTube is, but there is a... Uh, an element of a character that is created. And it's not like I sit down and think, let me come up with a character... But you just naturally, when you're in front of a camera, you can't present every part of yourself all the time. And maybe it's just my background in theater. That's why I feel like you'll understand what I'm going for. It's like, and it, the character isn't something that I consciously created, but I know, I sort of understand how people view me. And it's weird because sometimes when I'm making videos, I like think about the character of... Frank James versus me and I'm like oh, okay this is what it's it's difficult to explain because it's not like I say what would Frank James do and it's different than what the real me would do if well, YouTube Frank James versus real Frank James but but it's somewhat of a YouTube persona a bit because because it is what you're choosing to put out right you're not right and I would say that you have a filter Right, right, right. And plus, I just thought of this, but the the character is actually not just what you see on camera, but it's a mix of that plus the editing, you know? Because mm -hmm. I'm telling a story and almost, it's almost a separate character, the director's eye, the editor's eye, you know? Because the way you, mm -hmm. the way you cut something and present something makes it, can make it totally different than what it is if it was just raw footage. Yeah. It's like my camera died. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, back to the program. So I've noticed in your earlier videos, you seemed more mellow, and your and your newer videos, you seem more upbeat, charismatic. Which 
I'm sure both of those are elements of your personality, and I'm wondering which one feels truer to you, and, uh, and I guess, yeah, which one, if you feel like one is masking the other, or, you know what I mean? That's an interesting angle. I, well, I definitely think the more introverted me is closer to what I'm like in everyday life. That doesn't mean like me being more animated is not me, but it's not the natural mode of being, mm. you know, for me. And I think uh, be- the being more animated is really just part of trying to understand how to try to figure out how to make the product, the video better, you know. And it's just more interesting to watch someone who's a little bit more animated than someone who's very drawn into themselves. At least mm. from for me watching myself, it's not like I was constantly criticizing myself and being like, oh, I need to be more animated. But there were times when I was like, I need to just pump up, pump up the energy a bit more. You know, it's like, it's sort of like when you're, when you're acting on stage and uh, you just need to throw, you need to project more of your uh, inner feeling outward because it has to translate to people sitting 30 feet away. And YouTube, even though it's a camera in my face, it still is like you lose, you feel, you can feel like you're being intense, but it loses something unless you're Mm. like pushing it a bit beyond what, you think is natural so that's also part Mm. of the character you know so there is a and that's where the persona could come in yeah yeah because it's somewhat of a performance yeah because to an extent right to me i feel like when i am when i am turn when i've turned on the camera and i'm doing a video i feel like i have you know sort of gotten into a slightly different version of myself that you know is just a bit more pumped up it's not like not me but it's uh when in my normal day-to-day life i try to conserve as much energy as possible you know (laughs) that's really what it is so i don't find much need to be pumped up because i'm not trying to entertain anybody but that's what youtube is so when you are if you are in a situation where you're hosting a party yeah does that character come out yeah or is it a different character? No, it's ba- uh, it's basically that. Like, if I am, it happens from time to time. You know, if I'm comfortable in a group, uh, you know, I can be a lot more energetic. But usually, mm-hmm. my the role, you know, you play roles when you're in a mm-hmm. social situation. So, um. Occasionally, it seems appropriate to fill the role of being the more extroverted person. Mm-hmm. You know, but most often I definitely empathize. Go ahead. No, you. I was just gonna repeat myself. <laughs> no, I I definitely empathize with that, and um, it's interesting that you said when you feel comfortable, this side of you comes out, which shows that it is a side of you that you'd like to be, um, maybe you'd like a place for yeah sometimes so and i feel that like sometimes if i'm too quiet in a group or something or not that there's too quiet but to on, to my standards if i don't feel like i'm showing that maybe goofy side of myself um i can feel like oh there's more you know and yeah. so sometimes it can be freeing to kind of show that more extroverted side and right. having the other person like laugh enjoy it and like accept and be like yeah that part of you is cool too (laughs) and same with the other side with the calm kind of listening ear where you're just not like you said um what do you say maintaining energy or yeah conserving conserving preserving yeah conserving energy and again if you're in a safe place where people aren't judging like wow he's shy like why isn't he saying anything or you know making judgments if ultimately it's best to feel comfortable to show either sides of the personality i feel like yeah (laughs) 
I mean, that's just kind of like obvious. We want to feel comfortable around people. Right. And there's this whole element of when you, you know, it just to divide people into introvert, extrovert, when you are being more introverted and quiet, you are, you're more on the side of observer, audience, passive, you know, whereas if you're being more extroverted, you're on the, you're more on the side of, uh, you know, performer and uh, active. And so mm. there is a there is just a level of social pressure that comes with taking on a more extroverted role because suddenly eyes are on you, you know, and now you mm -hmm. and now it's sort of like maybe I'm maybe I'm just taking this too far. But there's sort of like once you start to put yourself out there and you're like, hey, I'm I'm being more extroverted. I'm carrying the conversation. I'm cracking jokes. Suddenly there comes this like implicit expectation to, you know, to continue to be responsible for it for a certain amount of time, you know? Mm -hmm. So for me, if I'm going to be more extroverted in uh, some kind of social situation, I, like you said, I need to feel comfortable with carrying that responsibility for a while because it's awkward when you're just, you're, you know, extroverted for like one second and then you go back to... <laughs> You know, yeah, first impressions are huge. It's like once they see you that way, it's almost like you have to live up to that. Yeah, so you've felt that before where depending on what group you're in, they you're filling like a different role and they view you differently. And either I mean, do you think that's because of a just an initial impression or do you think it's because you're kind of trying to fit into a group dynamic and in one it's better to be quieter and one it's better to be more outgoing? I think it's the latter, but definitely subconscious. Yeah. Uh, because I'll maybe go into an event wanting to be more outgoing, mostly because of how I was brought up. I was told that that was better. So I tend to kind of put myself to a high standard and like, oh, I'm going to be super gregarious and I want to be that way. I might go into a situation feeling like this is how I'm going to be and, and try and like I'm trying to be upbeat, but then there's a very dominant energy coming from someone in the group or multiple people in the group, yeah. and then I automatically take on the passive role right. just naturally. And then sometimes I'll leave disappointed in myself, like for not being like them <laughs> or something. Right, right. I totally. When really you need a listening ear. More people, you know, the book Quiet, have you read that by Susan Kane? I haven't. You got it. I haven't read it, but it's right here. <laughs> oh, it's a good one. I've read the like the first chapter. Yeah. So what's <laughs> what's the title of that? The power of introverts in a world that just can't stop talking. Mm. Wait, See, is it talking? A... Yeah, talking. And if it'll focus. It's a solid. You can't see this, name. but it's not focusing. There we go. A good book yeah with scientific facts studies i'm actually on i'm on page 12 actually oh <laughs> <laughs> that sounded like judgment <laughs> oh i see okay um all right so <laughs> my video of yours I, <laughs> wait, are we finishing because i up? feel like we should close it if it's yeah, yeah. If it's mine, then I should close it. It's mine. Probably. I don't know. This, if, it doesn't matter to so me. So this might be my video. And if so, you guys are on Molly the Person's YouTube channel. And um, go on and head over to Frank James' YouTube channel. And like, subscribe, hit the bell button. <laughs> I'm really bad at doing that, but you're pretty good at it. So maybe I should smash that like smash there's just smash your computer because you don't really need <laughs> screens you go outside um yeah thanks for chatting with me Frank it's nice to learn that you're not real and authentic and, um, <laughs> I'm a faker yeah no, I I I think this is a very interesting um, conversation and I hope that uh, 
that my sarcasm translated. Okay. It won't. They they they'll think you're serious. You're take me very but... literally. <laughs> yep. So, I haven't looked at the camera. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. So, if, I I still don't feel comfortable with this, but if you can't tell, um, okay. With what? <laughs> huh? <laughs> okay. I am going to. Okay, so, boom. Bye. Okay. See, I I get why you have a freaking catchphrase. Yeah, I really well, wish I could they, say one now. But then great, I just keep going. Then you just, it's just it just becomes like a line that you've memorized, mm. and you just say it. All right. And you give it a slightly different reading every time, you know. Yeah. Okay. Have fun. <laughs> <laughs> I do say that a lot to people. I'll be like, bye, have fun. Like, my boss was going to a business meeting. I'm like, have fun. And then I realized that that was kind of, that he wasn't going to have that. 